So again, let us first recall, say if we want to calculate the endpoint function in the interacting theory, and this is given by this foreign ratio in the free theory, look at this t, then you look at this, again take this product to be x, take the t x, x ratio i s i, then in the free theory, and then divide it just by time order i s i in the free theory, okay? Um, so, so what then what we do is we just expand these two exponential in power series. Okay, we expand this exponential in power series. And uh, so when you expand in power series, then, then for example, the nth order term in the upstairs, say upstairs, then have the following structure, you have i to the power n, n factorial, then you have t x, then si to the power to n si, okay? And then the nth order for the downstairs, you can also expand the, uh, the downstairs Say in the downstairs, similarly, then you have almost identical structure, except you don't have this x, okay? So you have t, then you just have n as i's, okay? So this n of them. So they are n of them, okay? And the last time, so we described how to compute, say, a typical terms in here. Okay, so let me call this equation star, equation star star. So last time we described, so the star and the star star can be computed using big theorem. Okay, but in practice, in practice, what we do is that we first draw Bauman diagrams. And then, then we convert the Feynman diagrams into, say, uh, uh, analytic expressions, okay? So normally we go through this procedure, okay? Rather than directly do the weak contraction. Uh, uh, rather than directly uh, uh, do the weak contraction. Okay, so we mentioned the, um, and the, the second line, of course, is just, uh, can be considered as a special case of the first line, uh, which you just, uh, uh, with this x to be identity, okay? This x to be identity. So, so, um, so any diagram, Contributing to star, okay, because the, yeah, sorry, I should actually, so here I have N, let me call it M, <laughs> it's so that they don't, uh, uh, sorry, I should call it M so that they don't, um, yeah, because we already have M, N here, okay. M's order, okay? 
So any diagram contributing to, say, the star has any external x, OK, has any external x. So that comes from just from this x, OK, from this phi, of phi x1 and the phi xn, OK? And uh, then uh, um, also with m, vertices, okay, because each vertices come from a power of Si, okay, a count power of Si. But for, for star star, so diagrams contributing To star star have no external x, okay? Because there's no uh, 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 there's no uh, uh, low x here. There's no phi here, okay? There's no external x, okay? So so that's why they are all called vacuum diagrams. Okay, and they're called the vacuum diagrams. Okay. So, so the downstairs can be understood as in the case which you just essentially take, uh, when you take x equal to 1, so essentially we are calculating the, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 yeah, some kind of unnormalized a transition between, yeah, just the overlap between the vacuum itself, okay, uh, between the vacuum itself, from mass infinity to plus infinity, okay, from mass infinity to plus infinity. So, um, so in P set 6, okay, in P set 6, yeah, just in the P set we just uh, uh, posted last night, you can show that this actually, this quantity, which come from Summing all, over all possible vacuum diagrams, okay, uh, the diagrams without external lags, okay, you know, have low, sorry, I should say have low external lag. This no is very important. <laughs> yeah, has no external lags. And so they're called vacuum diagrams. So, um, so in PSI 6, you will show yourself, okay, it's a, it's a pretty simple calculation, but it's an instructive one. Uh, um, you can show that the, this quantity can be used to calculate the vacuum energy. Okay, uh, the vacuum energy uh, uh, of the intact in series. Of course, this is divergent. But uh, 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 just as the vacuum energy we, calc uh, uh, we calculated before in free theory, okay, so, so this one can be used to calculate the vacuum energy of the interacting theory. Okay. So of course this quantity, will, uh, uh, you will see it's divergent. But at least the, this is the formal way to calculate it, and uh, uh, um, yeah, and the how to remove the divergence, is etc., uh, uh, is uh, um, something we will not discuss. Okay, uh, 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 in this class, will be in next class. Uh, will be in QFT two. So, any questions on this? Okay, good. So let me say a few more words. So, so when we compute two, so there we say they can be computed using the Feynman diagram. So let me be a little bit more, uh, uh, more explicit. So the computation of star or star star they involve the essentially involve two steps. So 
So I just elaborated that uh, 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 remark in the bracket. He said we first draw all possible or in equivalent Feynman diagrams. Okay. So in this case, so in this case, so at each order, at each m's order, you have m point, n external point, and then you have m vertices. Yeah, so, so there you have, say, for star, you just have, say, n external point, say, x1, x2, say, uh, in, in coordinate space. You have n external point, and then you have m vertices. And at each vertices, you have, uh, 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 um, say, say, let's call it y1, y2, ym. And each vertices, you have four legs coming out. Okay? And at each external uh, uh, vertex, uh, 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 point, you have one vertex come out, uh, uh, one line come out. Okay? And then you just need to find all possible ways to, contract, uh, to connect them. So, uh, so that we mean by drawing all, po all in, in equivalent diagrams. Okay, you just uh, 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 this just you just draw it. Okay, become mechanical. Uh, it become mechanical. Yes. Why did the vertices have Yeah. Oh, oh, we are talking about the here. We are talking about the yeah. More specifically, here we're talking about the SI. Yeah. So this is for the uh, SI equal to minus lambda for factorial. We consider this particular theory. Okay. Um, we consider, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to uh, make remarks on, on other, uh, more general series. Uh, but yeah, 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 here is more specific, yeah. Other questions? Okay. So, so this is for star. So for star star, then you just don't have the x. You just have y. So you just have m y, and each y uh, have four legs. You just connect all of them together. Okay, uh, you connect all of them together. So 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 in the in the star star, in the vacuum diagrams, so it will be always closed. Okay, because there's not uh, no external leg. Just because all the legs will be contracted, and so it will be a closed diagram. Okay. So sometimes also called the vacuum bubble. Okay, sometimes we call vacuum diagrams or vacuum bubbles. So so here just no, just it's just a, it's always a closed diagrams. Okay, closed diagrams. And so the uh, uh, this is the, and the second step. Is that now? Once you draw each, uh, draw all the equivalent diagrams, then you can just convert each diagram to an algebraic expression. Using Feynman rules. Okay. And then you just sum all of them together. Okay, you, then you sum all of them together. And then we talked about the Feynman rules last time. There's a coordinate space rules, there's a momentum space rules. You can do it in coordinate space, you can do it in momentum space. So I will not uh, uh, repeat them here to save time. And uh, so once we finish the second step, then you just have a bunch of analytic expressions, and then you just need to do the integrals. OK, uh, so a bunch of integrals, and you just need to do the integrals. OK. Any questions? Good. So, so some further remarks on one. So further remarks.
uh, on this first step. So, so here, here I consider a very special case, okay? Here I consider a very special case corresponding to this SI to be uh, 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 just consider a, a single term, phi four, okay? So, so in principle, of course, SI can contain multiple terms. Okay, can contain multiple terms. So um, then, yeah, if it, so if it contain multiple terms, then you will have diff multiple types of vertices. But the, the, the rule is similar, you just, you just say if you have, uh, 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 if you have the, uh, um, say suppose SI contain two, two, two terms, and then you just multiply them, okay? Uh, and, uh, and each, uh, and then you get many terms here. And uh, yeah, just corresponding to different combinations of vertices, okay? Uh, uh, for different type of vertices. And, but the rule is exactly the same, okay? Just now, uh, your diagrams are more complicated. Okay, your diagrams are more complicated. But, but essentially, it's on, uh, 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 otherwise, it's identical. So another thing to mention is that in principle, we can also have multiple fields. So here, we can see only a single scalar field, phi. But you can also, in principle, consider uh, uh, more than one field, okay? So if there are multiple fields, The story is again very much parallel, and uh, uh, the only difference is that each field, each propagator, is represented by different line. Other than that, uh, uh, um, yeah, we, again, the, these two steps again apply, okay? Uh, I just allow you actually have now two different type of lines. So for example, um, so suppose, uh, uh, for example, if you consider a series with two scalar fields, phi one, phi two, okay, with SI, say for example, with SI, say proportional to, by one square, by two square, okay? And then, then in this case, then you will have a, a propagator for phi one, then you also have a propagator for phi two, so if now I can use a dashed nine. And then, then the intacting vertex, then we'll have the following structure, you have two, and then, and then you have, yeah, two, uh, solid line and the two dash line. Uh, uh, now that's your vertex. Okay, and uh, um, yeah. So so yeah. Uh, again, uh, uh, you you just contract all possible lines according to to your Feynman rules. Okay. Good. So so also one remarks I want to make, uh, uh, to emphasize, is that in momentum space, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, just also just to, um, another point to stress. So in momentum space, so this is obtained by Fourier transform. So this is obtained by Fourier transform, Gn x1, xn, okay? And uh, times yeah uh, uh, times the delta function. So this times this give you the Fourier transform of that. So when you do the Fourier transform, 
Of course, uh, so P1 and Pn, they just come from uh, doing Fourier transform X, uh, 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 corresponding to momentum for X1 and Xn. So here, the P1 and the Pn just arbitrary, OK? They don't, they don't have to be uh, uh, satisfied any unshell condition. They're just arbitrary momentum. And the only constraint is that this is non-vanishing only, uh, uh, only when the sum of them are the, uh, uh, equal to 0. Uh, otherwise, uh, 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 they can be arbitrary. Okay. Good. So, so in practice, now you now we have a way to calculate the diagram for both upstairs and downstairs. And now we 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 just do the expansion. Okay, we just do the expansion. Then it's just again. Now let me summarize the example we did last time. Uh, 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 now, just only using diagrams, okay? So, for example, if we consider the two-point function, okay, let's consider the two-point function. So, so now the upstairs, so we have the upstairs and downstairs. So, the upstairs, the, sim, uh, the lowest order, you just have a single line, okay? You, you just have a single line, x1 to x2. So uh, to, uh, to, uh, to save effort, that we also uh, 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 not label x1, x2 uh, from now on, OK? And then the next, the next order is you bring down one power of this si. So you bring down one power of these four indices. So now there are two possibilities, OK? So one possibility is that you still have this, but then times. Uh, uh, this vertex contracts itself, okay, contracts itself. And then uh, uh, another possibility is that you have something like this, okay, and the, the, uh, uh, you contract with the vertex. So this is then plus lambda squared. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, all the, all the order to the, uh, um, yeah, to the lambda, uh, to lambda order, okay? And downstairs, you have one, and then you just essentially have the uh, uh, have a single SI, a single SI. The only contraction is just given by this, okay? And then plus all the lambda square, okay? Plus all the lambda square, okay? So. So now we can just, so now each vertex carry, so you should remember each vertex carry a parameter lambda, a, a factor of lambda which is considered to be small. So, so downstairs you have one plus all the lambda, and we can, in the downstairs then we have one plus this power series of lambda, and then we can do the Taylor expansion again to bring them to the upstairs, okay? And so, so remember we did before. So, so now if you do that, then at the leading order to, to lambda, then we still just have x1, x2, because this divided by that, just x1, x2. And then you have this term. But now we can bring this term to the upstairs, and then, uh, then this sign change it to minus sign. Okay, so this term can multiply that, and then you get the term like that. Okay, coming from bring this term uh, 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 to upstairs. And then you have this term, okay. And the rest, they're all of lambda squared. So you can also have this change to minus sign, multiply that, but that will be all the lambda squared, okay. And since here we already uh, neglected things in lambda squared, and here neglected lambda squared, and so, uh, uh, so, uh, so we don't worry about it, okay. And if you this multiply this, also give you lambda square. Okay, so, so up to all the lambda uh, and that you have. And then, as we discussed before, these two cancel. Okay, so in the end, you just have two diagrams, just one, and, uh, and then this one. Okay? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Here you 
Yeah, uh, uh, for here, uh, it doesn't matter. In this case, it doesn't matter uh, uh, how you draw them. You mean if I exchange them? Yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. Yeah. But in, in that picture, you can't read. Like, yeah, yeah, uh, normally you cannot view up and, uh, up and down, uh, left and right here does not mean anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the order uh, uh, is not important. Um, but actually, in, 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 in QFT2, you, uh, you see, you will encounter situations which these are matrices, and then the order become important. But here they just fail because they commute. Uh, so no matter how you order them, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they're just ordinary fields. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, uh, so this order, we just have these two diagrams, okay? So this is much simpler than we did at the first time. Okay, uh, uh, much simpler than we did at the first time, and the cancellation is much easier. So let me just show you the cancellation in a slightly different way, uh, uh, almost identical, but I write slightly differently. So I can also, alternatively, I can also write as this. I can also write G two. So we look at these two terms. We can just take a, fa a common factor out. So the upstairs, the first two terms, I can also write it as this times one plus this thing, and then plus this. Okay. And downstairs, I just have, and then plus lambda square. And downstairs, I just have one. Okay, so now you can just look at these two. You can directly see actually these two can be canceled. Okay, uh, uh, to be canceled. You don't have to worry about this one because when this, when this multiply that, you get higher orders. Okay, and so uh, so now you just directly also get from here. Okay, also get from here. So the reason, the reason I'm doing this in these two different ways is that this cancellation is actually not an accident. Okay? So, so such cancellation, so this is not an accident. So this is not an accident. This actually happens to all orders. Okay? This happens to all orders. So you can actually show Okay. Um, okay. So if I call the the upstairs, um, yeah. Uh, so now let's call the upstairs to be U N. And this to be u zero, okay. So u n is just the upstairs, okay, and u zero is the downstairs, okay. So so the u n by definition corresponding to sum over all diagrams, all Feynman diagrams. With n external lag, and the, uh, and the u zero by definition is sum of all Feynman diagrams with zero external lags. Okay, with zero external lags. So when you so then you can show, okay, you can show in general, which is the GN is just equal to, as we wrote there, just UN equal to U0. Okay, you can show that this, this defined to be UN equal to 0 is just given by, you find all the, you can show to all orders, this downstairs can always, always cancel. Okay, always cancel. So, so the statement is that this is equal to sum 
over the ratio, all diagrams of an external X an external X but without any vacuum bubbles. Okay? So, um, okay, so, so now let me just explain what this means that without any vacuum bubbles, okay? So, so this diagram, so this diagram is a diagram which contains just a straight propagator times a bubble. Okay, so, so this diagram contains a vacuum bubble. Okay, it contains a vacuum diagram. Uh, and this diagram does not. Uh, 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 this diagram is connected uh, uh, itself, okay? So, uh, 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 yeah, similarly, if, uh, uh, when you go to next order, as we discussed last time, that this diagram, so go to next order times, so this is also a diagram with vacuum bubble because you have this part uh, be, uh, uh, which does not have any external lag, okay? So, so this will not arise, okay? Uh, so, uh, so when you do the, uh, when you ca uh, uh, calculate the ratio, and then this kind of diagram, you automatically don't include them. Okay, you just don't, uh, uh, you just don't need to worry about them. So, so now when you do the, uh, uh, do the ratio, you can just forget about those diagrams and directly write down those diagrams without vacuum bubbles. Okay, so that just uh, uh, greatly uh, 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 simplify uh, uh, your life, okay? And the, uh, yeah, one second. So this statement is simply a gen So if you think a little bit, okay, uh, and then you will see that this uh, cancellation is generic. Uh, actually, uh, we'll work to all orders. And, uh, uh, and this thinking process is actually quite instructive. And so this is left as a homework. Okay, uh, uh, you can read the part in Paskin which try to explain this, uh, 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 this cancellation. Uh, but that discussion is actually not great. <laughs> it's not great, that discussion. Uh, uh, but you can still read it and get the main idea. And so, so in homework, uh, and so, so I ask you to show this yourself. Okay, I ask you to show this yourself. It's not difficult, once you get the idea, it's actually pretty simple to see, okay. And uh, 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 we'll be illuminating, okay. Yes? No, 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 you pull the whole thing together. You, uh, 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 you pull the whole thing together. Uh, just those terms don't, uh, don't matter at this order. Yeah, they just, uh, whatever here, uh, when you pull, when you cancel them, you cancel the whole thing, just this term don't matter. Uh, if you care only uh, of all the lambda square term, and then, uh, and then you can just directly cancel these two. Yeah. Yeah, you can easily convince yourself uh, 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 right, uh, uh, you don't have to do a diagram, just write something A, 1 plus lambda plus some other lambda, and 1 plus, uh, yeah, anyway, you can just convince yourself that this always happens. Yeah. Yes? Uh, so this cancellation, does it just, does it just come out of this math, or is, it, is there like a physical interpretation? Um, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, there is a physical interpretation. Essentially, you just say when you look at, yeah, so, so this kind of thing is essentially the, uh, uh, come from the normalization of your state. Uh, uh, just, uh, uh, this thing is just pure vacuum process and just come from normalization of the state. And when you normalize your state, they just should not contribute to your, uh, yeah, to your correlation functions. Yeah, just roughly it's like that. Other questions? Okay, good. So, so now let's just uh, uh, put this in practice. Okay, let's put this, this in practice. Let me just write down the, um, the most general, all the diagrams 
or for G2, to lambda square order, okay, so, so now let's look at G2 to lambda square order. So we have already find the lambda order. So, so the lambda square order, we already draw a bunch of diagram last time, okay? So you only need to keep those which don't include these vacuum bubbles. So, so that just, yeah, let me just write them down. So including this, including that, and also including which the one I forgot last time, this one. Okay, that's it, okay? And uh, uh, but remember last time we drew many more diagrams, but you don't need to worry about the others, such as diagrams like this. Okay. Good, so let's do a lot of example for the four point function. So now it's become much easier because you have much fewer diagrams to, to consider. Okay, you have much fewer diagram to consider. So, so at the uh, four point function level, then you have, then you have the, uh, uh, the uh, you first have the, your free series terms, okay? So the free series terms, you just have like that. Uh, it, it just contracted uh, uh, with itself. Now we have four external points. Okay, so, so this is come from the free series contribution at the zeroth order. And then at the first order, at all the lambda, you just have this. So that all the f all four different phi's from the vertex uh, are contracted with each, uh, each of the external phi's. Okay, so this is the, uh, the first order. And then you can also have a um, uh, 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 diagram like this, okay? And you can also have, uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, I will not draw all the diagrams, okay? I will just draw, uh, and you can draw more diagrams like this, but these are not vacuum bubbles. And you can also have diagrams like this. The reason I draw them because you are going to do some of them in your P set. Yeah, there's another diagram like that, etc. Okay, so so yeah, let me just draw one, two more. Uh, there's still some more diagram you can draw. to lambda square order, okay? But again, you just, uh, it's mechanical, okay? Uh, with a little bit of patience, uh, uh, there's no, no mystery here, okay? So now let me make some remarks here. Let me make some remarks here. First, so the diagram you can see is separate into two types. So the full GN separate into two types. One type is called connected diagrams. So connected diagram just by, yeah, just essentially by, by its name, uh, uh, this corresponding to diagrams which all the external legs, they are connected within a single diagram, okay? And uh, so this is a connected diagram. Oh, oh, no, 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 this is a connected diagram, but this is not, okay? And this is a connected diagram, this connected diagram, this connected diagram, this is not, okay? This is also a connected diagram, okay? And you can also have disconnected diagrams.
So these connected diagrams corresponding to diagrams as here. So 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 not so your uh, your external legs separated into sub diagrams. Okay, they belong to product of sub diagrams. And later we will later you will see that actually uh, uh, later we will argue this is actually not interesting. Okay, only connected diagrams are interesting, but uh, uh, in, in the few minutes, okay, so, so for the moment, let's just to uh, uh, define them. Right. And then, yeah, so, 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 um, yeah, and, uh, and uh, uh, emphasize again the uh, external PI general, okay? So, so each external line, which you can assign a momentum PI, okay, because from the Fourier transform, okay, from the Fourier transform. So, for example, here you have P1, P2, P3, P4 in momentum space. Each one you can assign a momentum and not momentum general, okay, it can be in principle, it can be anything, okay. Good, any questions on this? Yes. No, there's no trick to make sure you counted all of them. The only trick is patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just eliminate. Yeah, I just try to eliminate all possibilities. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a finite number of them. You can always do it. Yes. Sorry. Can you like count the number of diagrams to put the number of points? No, there's no. I think there's no general formula to tell you at each order how many diagrams you should have. There's no such kind of magic formula. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's only. Uh, there's only one formula, uh, there's only one, yeah, it's not a formula, it's just only one trend which you can show that when you go to nth order, okay, when you go to nth, uh, when you go to nth order, guess there are how many, roughly how many diagrams at, uh, uh, at nth order. Yes? That's right, M factorial. <laughs> so it's quite a lot of them, okay? So once you go to, say, fourth or fifth order, it become a lot. And uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, 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 you can be uh, sure that we, uh, <laughs> we will not ask you to eliminate to fourth order in your P set. <laughs> yeah, and uh, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, actually, this growth of the Feynman uh, the growth of the number of Feynman diagram uh, implies something deep. Uh, actually, it, it implies yeah. I mean, just it, it, it's a side remark. Uh, implies that this perturbation theory in lambda is actually not convergent because because the number of diagram grow too fast, and so at n if at m's order become m factorial. Then that means the uh, the m's order contribution goes, uh, also grow as m factorial, and then that means this power theory is actually not convergent. It's only a symptotic series, and uh, but still, for for many physical purposes, it's enough. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Because this concludes our discussion of, uh, of calculating such kind of Feynman uh, uh, correlation functions. Uh, uh, using f uh, <coughs> yeah for interacting theory. Okay. Yes. You said that it's not convergent, but it is asymptotic. Yeah, it's a yeah it's a symptotic series. Yeah. Uh, what, sorry. Uh, what's the distinction between those? Yeah, yeah. Symptotic series is the kind of series which you you since we we'll go since we we'll, uh, uh, yeah just the higher order terms will be small uh, will be smaller and smaller. Uh, uh, for for a while and then grow uh, 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 then grow again, and so if you don't calculate too high order, actually they become very uh, uh, they're actually quite reliable. You can uh, uh, you can bound uh, the arrows. Yeah, yeah, you can bound. Yeah, uh, so this is the heuristic way to say. It. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just that when you look at the first few order terms, it still can be reliably, uh, 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 it's a reliable approximation to your true answer. No, no, depend on your specific theory, right? So, so maybe your theory, uh, uh, that is just the, uh, 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 maybe that's just your theory. Yeah. So like, how do you like, apply this to like, a physical problem? Like, how do you know what? Oh, yeah, yeah, in physical problem, you, you st yeah, so, yeah, in one second, uh, uh, we will t uh, tell you how to come from here to calculate the scattering amplitude. And uh, when you find the scattering amplitude, then you can measure in experiment, then you try to deduce back the action. Yeah. And, and in general, what changes is just like how many edges your vertex has? Is that like the point of the end is just as one sphere? Yeah, that's right. That's right. What if it's like, I don't know, one over, like something off n away? Is that? Oh, it, it can happen. Uh, 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 as, a, uh, 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 as a toy model, you can always write whatever theory you want. But, but in nature, somehow the, the series we discovered so far is all polynomial. Okay, good. So now, uh, 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 so earlier we mentioned that there's this SL, LSD theorem, which tells you that the scattering amplitude uh, 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 can be obtained from these time-ordered correlation functions. Okay, so, so now let's go, uh, uh, go back to this uh, LSD story again, tell you actually how to obtain scattering amplitude from uh, 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 correlation functions, okay, from correlation functions. So, so the basic idea is the following, okay? So the basic idea is following, is that you take your endpoint function, okay, with n external momentum p1 to pn, okay, and then take all so as I emphasized here, each pi is general, okay? But now suppose you take all momentum, all pi, okay, to be on shell. So now you consider them to satisfy pi square equal to minus m square. Okay, <clears throat> so um, yeah, so in order to get the amplitude, you need to do this step. You take all the external momentum on shell. This is very reasonable to expect because when we're scattering particles, uh, 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 remember we say the initial particle can be considered as a free particle, fellow particle can also be uh, considered as free particle. It, it, if they are free particle, then, then, then their momentum satisfies this on shell condition, okay? So, so in order to relate this to uh, a scattering amplitude, and then we need to take this kind of momentum uh, to be on shell, okay? But now if you look at this, you say there are two possible choices for this equation. Because this equation has two solutions. Okay, so, so for each pi, so pi zero can either be plus minus omega pi. So, uh, so we are using the same notation we used before, okay? So, so this pi vector is the spatial part, and then you have omega pi, okay? So this omega pi is just the, the okay? So you have two uh, uh, possible solutions, okay? So, so now the rule is the following, okay? Now is, uh, the rule is following. Take, say let's take P1, say take, take M of them, okay? We take their, uh, 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 we take the, Negative root. 
supposed to be so alpha will be one over to m. And then, then for the rest, say pm plus one. So let's consider the following situation, okay? And then you take the positive root. Okay, so, so let's consider the following situation. Okay, so let's imagine we take such an endpoint function in momentum space, and then we take all the momentum on shell, but for, for some of them, we take them to be take the negative root, and some of them we take to, uh, to be the positive root. And then there's a theorem, okay, so this is called the LSD theorem, which is three person. Lehman, Semantic, and Zimmerman. So this theorem says, under this limit, okay, uh, 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 under this limit, under this unshare limit, so you will see uh, why we, we emphasize we call it uh, uh, unshare limit. So you so imagine you don't actually put them to be exactly a, a, a momentum. You take the momentum to be approach that, okay? To be approach that, we just emphasize. So in this limit, then you find that your momentum space correlation function. Okay, you find your momentum space correlation function approach to the following quantity in this limit. Yeah, so um, so first we write down the expression and then we will explain what this means. And let me just do it downstairs, sorry. Times. So let me do it downstairs. Times. Plus infinity. Okay. So the statement is the following. And here z just some constant. So so we don't need to worry about it. So d is just some constant. And uh, and so this is square root z divided by this factor for each external momentum. And this is just the scattering to, uh, this is the scattering amplitude for m initial particles, oh sorry, uh, I forgot the minus sign, it should be minus p1, minus p2 to minus pn, okay? So this is the scattering amplitude for particles with the initial momentum minus p1 to minus pm into particles with final momentum uh, m plus one, uh, p, uh, m plus one to p n. Okay, so essentially, whether you choose the negative root or the positive root, decide whether this you are in the initial state or in the in the final state. Okay, whether you are in the final state in the scattering amplitude. Okay. So, so let me just write here. Um, yeah. So, so let me just copy this again. Uh, so, so this 
scattering amplitude, yeah, so this is the, yeah, let me just write here. So this is Pn, Pn plus 1, Pn plus infinity minus P1 minus Pm minus infinity. So this is the scattering amplitude from, so this is the scattering amplitude this is amplitude for the particle with momentum P1, Pm, at, minus, at t equal to minus infinity, transition into to the particle to n to to the rest particles at this momentum at t plus infinity. Okay? So, um, so to save the, uh, uh, to save the rotation, so, so again this will, so remember previously we defined So if you remember before we defined this object this object should also preserve the uh, because of the time translation symmetry uh, 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 this object will also preserve the energy and the momentum. So this object is also proportional to, so you can extract out the delta function. And then times a quantity which we called scattering amplitude before, say alpha to beta, okay? So alpha denotes the initial state. So this is the initial state alpha and this is the final state beta, okay, okay? So now if you plug this into, plug this uh, expression into here, and then you will find, that, uh, then the delta function will just cancel on both sides, okay, delta function cancel on both sides, and then you find that this gn, p1, pn, is just equal to, approach this product of the delta functions, uh, 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 approach this uh, uh, this factor, and then m alpha to beta. Okay. So this is a statement of the LSD theorem. It essentially tell you that the uh, um, tell you that the uh, uh, such a trans, uh, uh, such a scattering amplitude just can be obtained from this, okay? And yeah, uh, uh, you multiply those things and then just equal to that. So now you observe, these are precisely, up to this factor of z, these are precisely just propagators for the external lags, okay? So, so now you conclude, okay, so, so in other words, so, so that means that the m alpha beta, then corresponding to you just take the g, then you get rid of all the, ex all the external propagators. Okay, because they just correspond to uh, uh, the external propagators for each external lag. Okay, just get rid of the external lag. Okay. Here I'm just telling you the theorem, and we are going to, uh, we will use it, but of course the derivation is a little bit complicated, okay? So, uh, yeah, so let me just, since this is a little bit, so let me just uh, uh, write it in words, okay? In words, to obtain the scattering to amplitude m to alpha beta, is that first you calculate, so, so suppose you have m part, yeah, just uh, uh, you 
suppose the total number of initial particle and the final particle are n, and then you just f first take gn, f first calculate, yeah, just take gn for, uh, for n particles, okay? So suppose, uh, and then, Take pi on shell, and the initial momentum take the active root root, and the uh, in the final momentum you take a positive root. Okay of that equation, okay? And then, the last step, you just truncate all the external propagators. Truncated the, all the external legs. So, 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 so uh, uh, that just come from you need to to obtain m. By you need to divide uh, uh, this side by this factor. Then up to this factor of z. Okay, this factor z will only give you uh, a constant, which let's uh, uh, which uh, 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 let's not worry about it for now. Okay. Yes. Which is putting ad hoc? Like why are you, which, why are you setting some of them to be negative? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 that I will explain, uh, uh, that I will explain. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 first let me just state the rule. First you understand the rule, let's, uh, then I try to make you more comfortable, okay, uh, uh, with the rule. Yes? Okay. Yeah, yeah, here is just the rule, okay, uh, here I'm just explaining, uh, here is the rule. Uh, 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 this, this is a statement you can prove mathematically. So this is a mathematical statement you can prove. Okay, and then following from this statement, and then here is the rule of uh, to obtain the m alpha beta from the g. Okay, and uh, 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 yeah. So 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 yeah. If I want to write it in one sentence. So, so scattering amplitude just equal to sum over all truncated diagrams. with external momentum on shell. Okay, so if I uh, summarize into one sentence, it's just this. Okay. So, I would say the only thing unintuitive here the only thing non-intuitive here is this sign choice. Okay, it's this sign choice. Everything else I think is intuitive. Uh, uh, everything else in the intuitive, you, uh, you take this green function which contains essentially n, n external lags, and now you just uh, imagine this n internal lags corresponding to initial and the final particles, and then it's very reasonable we make them on shell, okay, a big, big, because they are physical particles. And then, then the only thing which may be unintuitive is that why for the initial momentum we need to take the active roots, but for the final momentum we need to take a positive roots. And then, and then the final thing here is just, uh, uh, if you imagine the, uh, when you scatter particles and, uh, and how they propagate to, uh, to the scattering does not matter. 
Okay, so, so the propagator just essentially tell you this particle, uh, how, they, uh, how they propagate to the, uh, to the scattering point, okay? And uh, 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 so this should not matter uh, for the scattering process, uh, for the scattering process. And essentially, yeah, so, 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 so we will uh, explain this at the end, okay? And, uh, but before we do that, uh, uh, let's just look at uh, 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 one, uh, one example, okay? Do you have any questions? Yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you just not include the, just yeah. You will see explicitly. Just we just don't include the all the, all the uh, external propagator. Okay. Yeah. Let me give you an example. Will be clear. So so let me just give you an example. So let's consider G four particle scattering. Okay. Let's consider. Say so imagine you have some. Yeah, so, uh, so, so following the convention here so is the minus P1, P2, okay? So you have minus P1 and the minus P2. And then you have P3 and P4, okay? So let's suppose we want to calculate a, a such kind of scattering amplitude, two initial particles uh, uh, with momentum minus P1 and the minus P2. Uh, you see, when you take the, this to be the lactive root, then the minus P will actually have positive energy, okay? So the minus P will actually have a, a positive energy. So all of them have positive energy, okay? All of them has positive energy. Okay, so, so if you want to calculate in this case, and then you just take the G4, P1, P4, okay? And then you just take P1 and P2 to take to be negative root. Yeah, uh, uh, just to save the time, say to, uh, to take to the negative root, okay? And then P3, P4 to be the positive root, okay? With the positive root. And then you don't uh, and then, uh, then let me put the C here, then you truncate, uh, then put the T here, then you truncate your external uh, uh, propagator, okay? Then you truncate your external propagator. So, so what this means, so let's look at the leading order contribution to this. So the leading order contribution to that, we already have the diagram there. So the leading order, so those in the free theory, those processes don't contribute, okay? Because those things, there's no interaction here. Particle just propagates, okay? So, so the lowest diagram is this one. Okay, the lowest diagram is this one. So, so we just consider that diagram. So that's just leading order, just given by that diagram. Okay? And then you have minus P1. minus P2, and the minus then P3, and the P4, okay? So now according to our Feynman rule, this vertex just gives you a factor of minus I lambda. So if we want to calculate this green function, then we need to include all these four propagators, okay? But here it tells us to truncate all the, uh, but all the propagators here are external. So we don't include them. So the answer here is simple, just minus I lambda. Okay, and so, so, so the leading order contribution to this four particle scattering is just minus I lambda. Okay. And then you have all the uh, lambda contributions. Lambda square contributions. Okay. Yes? Um, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, uh, 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 I'm going to mention that. Good, 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 I'm going to, uh, 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 that's a good question. Yeah, I'm going to mention that. Yeah, uh, so again, that one does not correspond to the scattering. Uh, I think it just corresponds into one particle propagated. Yeah, be, because there's no, no interaction between the particles. They factorize. Yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, so this one involves uh, uh, two particles, then uh, 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 there's interaction, you go to two other particles. Here, you just, one particle straight goes to the other particle. Uh, so this particle, by definition, has to be the same as this one, this has to be the same, so there's no scattering. Yeah, but, uh, uh, but I will mention this point separately uh, uh, a little bit later. So, so another possibility, say if we want to consider the decay of a particle into three other particles, okay? So a decay of a particle into three other particles. So in this case, then, then again we take G4, so now we take minus P1, and then P2, P3, P4, and now we take P1, P4, now we take P1 goes to minus root, P1 zero is the minus omega, and then P3, 2, 3, 4, take it to be the positive root, okay? And then that corresponding to this process, okay? And again, the leading term, the non-trivial term is just this. The leading non-trivial term is this, so, so now this is minus P1. So now this is P2, P3, P4. Again, the leading order, this is just minus nine lambda, okay? Because you don't need to include external legs, okay? And, uh, and then, yeah, so this goes on to a single particle decay into three other particles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now let me make some remarks. Right. So, um, Yeah, I erased this, but it, yeah, fine. So, um, so the remarks so first we when we say, yeah, you already asked, when we calculate this to the leading order we only included the connected diagrams, okay? So, so the disconnected diagrams, in general, factorize it means that the, when you have a disconnected diagram, means that your, your process factorizes into Subscattering process of law orders. Okay. So so yeah so um, as we were doing here. So there's one other diagram which goes one into just this one. Okay, just corresponding to this, you have P1 minus P1, say minus P2, P3, P4, okay? So you can also have a, 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 a diagram like this. But in this case, just corresponding to P1 separate go to P3, and P2 separate go to P4, okay? So, so that's, uh, nothing really happens. So, so in general, if you have n particle scattering, you have n particle scattering, so with some number of initial particles and some, uh, 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 some number of fellow particles, when you have a, when you have a, a disconnected diagram, means that you have 
means you have a situation like this. You have one diagram with some subset of particles go to some subset of particles, and with a lot of diagrams, some set of particles go to some set of particles. Okay. So this involves scat so this is a three to three scattering. And then essentially this factorize into two to two scattering, and then one particle just go to a lot of particle. Okay. And so this can already be understood uh, in terms of low order process. Okay. So so normally uh, 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 we don't yeah so so we don't include them uh, 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 yeah so so essentially they already understood okay they already understood. So when we uh, uh, define the scatter amplitude, we don't include them okay. So we are only interested. In process, involving all participating particles. Okay. So we are actually run out of time. Um, So let me, so this is first remark. So second remark is that since we truncate all the external lags, okay, we truncate all the external propagators. So this kind of diagram, you have a loop on one of the uh, uh, external propagators. So this diagram don't contribute, okay? Do not contribute. Because this one, after you have truncated the external lags, it's no different from this one. Okay, it's no different from that one. And so, so you don't have to count this one uh, uh, separately, okay? Uh, so this one just corresponding to Say uh, uh, when the particle propagate to infinity, somehow uh, there's some other process to happen to this particular particle. So when you truncate the external lags, uh, then you don't include them. Okay, you don't include them. Okay. So so that means so with this two, so means that the scattering amplitude. Okay, so so can forget. So essentially, you can forget anything happening to the external X, okay? You can have complicated things happen to external X, but they don't matter, okay? They don't matter, okay? So, so to summarize, the scattering amplitude, when you compute the scattering amplitude, you just sum over, following this definition, you sum over all truncated, means you truncate all the external lags, connect it, because we want all particles to participate, and then the external particle on shell. Okay, so so this is a, a simplification compared to con uh, calculate the general correlation functions. So uh, so I have two other remarks to make, but we don't have time. So one remark contains the choice of this sign: why initial momentum corresponding to active root, and uh, and why this corresponding to positive root, and a lot of remark related to this fact of z. Okay, related to this fact of z. And uh, so uh, uh, we will uh, uh, talk about them at the beginning of next lecture. And then after that, then we are done. Okay, then we are done with the general formulation uh, of interacting theory. And now we will be equipped with the power. Essentially, you can calculate any interacting theory, uh, any amplitude, uh, unit perturbation theory. And, uh, and then, but, but in order to calculate anything useful, we still have to first learn how to treat fermions, how to treat photons, and, uh, and then that's what we will do next. 
So we will start in lecture. Uh, uh, next lecture, we'll uh, 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 talk about how to, uh, how, uh, how to deal with fermions, how to introduce fermions. And after that, we talk about how to introduce photons. And then we can talk about QED, how photons interact with electrons, et cetera. Yeah. OK, good, good. Yeah.